Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to the Self-Knowledge Lectures. As every Sunday we have our Facebook Lectures. Welcome. And today we are going to continue talking about the mountains of the initiation. And in last Sunday we were talking about the first mountain. And today we are going to talk about the second mountain. And uh, we are going to see when this mountain of initiation begins, what it represents. And we are going to be talking about, about all the internal work that this mountain of death entails, where we will internally live the apocalypse, which is the end by fire of all of our lower nature, so that after dying to all of our ego, we get to resurrect to light as immortal beings. So uh, today's lecture is very interesting and let's go on and immediately start with today's lecture. Well, but first I mean uh, to start talking about the second mountain of initiation I want to start um, by making a quick like recapitulation of the work of the first mountain which we started last week to enter you know directly into today's topic uh, having like the context of what we are uh, talking about so uh, in the previous lecture Facebook lecture we saw that the first step that will lead us to find um, and to start the journey of the initiation path um, that is the path that will lead us to achieve the intimate self-realization of our being. The first step would be to receive the knowledge of the three factors of the revolution um, or for the revolution of the consciousness um, that are the psychological death, the spiritual birth and the sacrifice for humanity as you are doing right now. And the second step will be to begin to practice these factors, to go from being simple uh, sympathizers with this knowledge to beginning to practice, to enter that mesoteric stage that will lead you to true esoterism. And the beginning, the real beginning of the initiation path, of course, when we manage to light the sacred fire. And that thanks to a work, achieving uh, the balance of our centers, uh, practicing the four rites, as we started in the previous lectures, and uh, achieving chastity, which is never um, letting our sexual energy go out from our body, uh, or never expel the sexual energy through orgasm and ejaculation, but uh, it's sexually uniting with our partner, to make this powerful sexual, en sexual energy to go all the way um, inside and upward, you know, through our spine to um, take it to the higher centers. And once we are doing that work and once we start like passing the trials and through that practice of supra sex, we get to light the sacred fire we internally, that is in the astral world, receive a, a sword with a short blade. And that blade will be growing as we advance on the different initiations. That is the beginning of the initiation path, which is the beginning of the work of the first mountain. And we were talking um, last Sunday that when you leave that internally, there is the birth of the Moses, which is like a little child that is going to be born inside of you, which is a part of your consciousness. And Moses, you know, is rescued from the waters because we are doing that um, work. We have been doing that work of cleaning our waters and saving our waters. And now we uh, like um, rescue that force from our inner words. And that force, that internal force that is represented in the Moses is um, coming to help us 
throughout the process of the first mountain and we'll be growing uh, seven, uh, like seven years each in each initiation. And uh, we will actually advance in this path and we will achieve and pass each initiation with the practice of the three factors in our daily lives. You know that initiation is the very life but wisely lived with righteousness, wisdom and love. And passing each of the initiation trials that we will be facing both internally and externally. That way we are going to be advancing in this initiation of the first mountain. The first initiation will be the regeneration of the physical body, turning um, this lunar body into a solar body. And at the end of this initiation, the baptism of water will begin and we will receive the Tao Ki, which is a symbol of chastity. The second initiation will be the regeneration of the vital body. This initiation brings uh, a prison trial for men. And the third initiation will be the, will, uh, sorry, will be the creation of the solar astral body. And during that third initiation, we will leave the trial of the garden of the threshold of the astral world. And if we get to pass that trial, we will continue advancing in that path. The fourth initiation of the first mountain will be the creation of the solar mental body. And this initiation will entail like facing ourselves with the well, terrible guardian of the threshold of the mental world. And uh, if we pass that trial and we finish that initiation, then we will go on to create the solar cast causal body, which is the body of the will. This will be the fifth initiation of major mysteries. And here we will be like confronted with the decision of the path. The guardian of the threshold of the causal world will make us decide between the path of Nirvana, which is the spiral path, or the direct path, which is the path of the Christ. And if we are revolutionaries and if we are willing to do the will of our Father, we will choose the narrow, difficult um, path, which is the one that leads us to the second mountain. And that that a uh, hard path is the path that leads us to liberation and that leads us to achieve the union with our inner being through the birth of the son of the man, which is the Christ, which is that force that is going to be born in us, um, beginning the second mountain. And well, you know, the path of Nirvana, although uh, full of pleasures doesn't lead us to liberation, but um, after perhaps hundreds of years in those uh, nirvanic states, we will return again to the starting point to try self-realization again, but having like settled down that recurrence that make us make the same decision over and over again if we don't get to revolutionize ourselves. And well, by choosing the direct path, which is the one that I hope each of you who do this work take, me as well. Um, the initiate finish the creation or finishes the creation of his causal body, which implies having achieved the fabrication of his human soul. At that point, he has become a true man. And he has, at that point, around 76% of awakened consciousness. And the Father gives him all the power to govern nature, air, fire, water, and earth. The inner nature and the water nature. And, well, already being a true man, that uh, human soul has the right to unite with its divine soul, which is the Buddhic body. And from that union between the human and the divine, uh, which is internally a sexual intercourse, the uh, gestation of the intimate Christ is given, which is, you know, the force that will come to do the work of the second mountain. And, uh, well, finishing the first mountain, which is the mountain of birth, 
or the mountain of the creation through the waters, also known as the Genesis, um, the person has approximately 84% of consciousness, of awakened consciousness, and at that point, uh, the death of the Moses, of course, who, who is like the man of the first mountain, to give way to the birth of the intimate Christ. And well, that was like the recapitulation of the first mountain. Actually, when the Christ is born in the heart of the man, then the beginning of the second mountain, of course. And this is the Christmas of the heart, when that uh, Christic force is born in the heart of men, the um, Christ, which is the fire of the fire, it is like a purifying fire that comes to make in our interior the apocalypse, or as I was saying, the end of the fire of uh, all of the ego. And even though at that point we have made like a, a whole work, um, I mean, we have done at that point a lot of work with our visible wound, with the um, defects that compose our visible wound. But actually, at that point, the heaviest beasts of our psychology that belong to our invisible moon and the seven console selves are still alive. That is why the Christ is born in a manger that has like a lot of animals and that is the reason why because even though it is a um, pure child a very powerful and uh, very uh, pure uh, force which is the Christ actually he is born in us and we at that point are still like a manger we are still full of beasts and that is the work that he's coming in to do and that is why this mountain is called the mountain of death because it is, even though we are going to be working with the three factors we will continue practicing the suprasexuality with our physical partner we are going to continue eliminating our psychological defects with the psychological death and practicing the sacrifice for humanity um the it, this mountain is like more focused in the death of the ego <clears throat> Sorry, because that is like the purpose of that force that is coming to make that work. And well, we need to know that this second mountain is a mountain full of um, difficulties and full of dangers, in dangers of death. Since the Christ, um, or where, from the very moment that the Christ is born, he is persecuted. All the White Lodge, in the farthest corner of the universe, um, know at that point that a, the Christ was born in the heart of a person. In that small uh, blue planet there, there is a guy that was revolutionary enough to make the Christ be born in him. And, but at the same time, all the Black Lodge, uh, knows that that happened, that the birth of the Christ was um, done in someone and actually that represents a great threat to, the, to, to their power because a Christ is a light and that light makes many people to wake up from their uh, lethargy and to seek the revolution of their consciousness. So actually the Black Lodge is going to try to eliminate that person. And just as we saw the story of the birth of uh, Jesus Christ, remember that Master Jesus came to show with his life the path of the second mountain that every initiate must live internally. And as we, the same as we saw that uh, Herod, in, uh, immediately the Christ was born, uh, was trying to look uh, for him and to kill him. Actually, Herod is the representation of the Black Lodge that is going to, to, uh, to how can I say, to, um, to try to chase or to try to find that person and to kill that Christ. But just the same as um, Joseph was warned in a dream to hide the child, 
and Joseph represents our astral body. Uh, the same we will be warned in the astral plane when our life is in danger so we can like save ourselves. And well, something that we must know is that this force of Christ is too powerful and is born and when it is born it just like settles on one side of the heart of the man because the solar bodies of the first mountain are not like pure enough to resist the voltage of the Christ for this reason immediately uh, initiate in the second mountain the Christ initiates the creation of the bodies of gold that will uh, each one of them will mark like the seven initiations of gold uh, which are the initiations of the second mountain and he initiates as I was saying will do that work with his physical partner by practicing the suprasexuality during the entire work of the second mountain and um, as the initiate begins to work with the construction of these bodies of gold those bodies of fire will die and are going to be replaced with those bodies of, of gold that are like going to be pure enough and strong enough to resist a dark christic force and uh well on the second mountain the work is much more demanding than than on the first mountain a step can can't be taken except in terms of death and birth and sacrifice for humanity you know that the, the three factors whoever is not dying on the second mountain cannot move forward and can uh, the person at that point cannot like remain static because he goes up or goes down and since he's not dying he has to go down so death is like basic and fundamental to be able to climb the second mountain actually the second mountain is not the same as the first one in the second mountain there is no rest for the initiate because the law is like above him it is not it is not like the first mountain that the person was working a little and resting a little and uh, if i want yeah i'm going to work on that defect later yeah no today i don't want to do the practice of the super sexuality etc it's not the same the second mountain is a rigorous work is uh, it has a, or the person needs to have a lot of esoteric discipline the initiate must be dedicating practically all of his life to his inner work and there is no rest when he wants to sit down to rest the law like falls on him and says hey, move on move on so he can't uh, sit still and here the initiate loses the free will because the Christ doesn't do his own will but always do the will of the Father and the will of the Father is the self-realization and that is why a person who takes the direct path always um, self-realizes because the Christ is not a traitor but rather a uh, does the work that he came to do not the same as us in the first mountain which are like you know subject to betray at any point or subject to uh, twist ourselves in the path uh, because we are in this we are we are done still we don't have that christic force in ourselves so we are like so something to betray this path at any point but uh, if you reflect on this you see the importance of working a lot uh, until we reach the point to take the direct path and let that christic force to be born in us so we can like make ourselves sure that we really are going to self-realize 
because now we can say yes I want with all of my heart uh, set my, myself free help my other brothers of humanity to be free oh yes I really want to self-realize that is the path I recognize it I know I'm going to work I'm going to dedicate my whole my entire life to achieve the self-realization but the truth is that we are weak. The truth is that, that at any point, any um, hard psychological defect can come and start making us feel that you are not, you, you are not good enough, you don't have time, uh, you are never going to achieve this or that, you can't. And, you, and we, uh, with our betrayal selves, we let ourselves to be convinced by those psychological defects and we end up betraying the path. We don't do that, we, we don't develop that revolution in ourselves to go and do the work that we have to do. So if we really want to do this work, we need to be practicing the psychological death and study a lot the eyes of treason in ourselves so we can get to that point and actually do this work. And well, in the second mountain is where the initiate gives himself like the luxury of incarnating the internal Christ. Um, and this internal Christ is the one that has all the powers over the cosmos, all the powers over the nature and over everything. This child, it is said that has a beautiful figure which cannot uh, be explained verbally because the verb, like these figures, the beauty, the beauty of this child. And also like Moses, he, is, he, he um, is born like a very small child and he is taken by the law of seven. So he uh, is going to be growing seven by seven with every initiation. And he's going to be growing according to the three factors that the initiate is continue working on and uh, according to the love that he is developing because the Christ foot is love because he himself is love. And well, as the initiate ascend, the child grows and goes manifesting with more power and more wisdom. He uh, gradually awakens his Terribly powerful, uh, powerful faculties, you know, where, where he has a power over everything, over the cosmos and over all the creations. He's actually uh, someone who can create with the verb. And um, for him to come to incarnate in us, needs to be creating the bodies of gold. And the first one, uh, which is the... Uh, Gold physical body, let's call it like that, um, is going to, that is the first initiation. And uh, in this initiation, the Christ is going to, is going from zero to seven year, years. But these are esoteric years. They uh, don't correspond to the physical years. Those are actually like levels of consciousness. And, um... The person to do this second mountain is given a thousand years to do all the work of the second mountain, but he can actually get to complete the second mountain in about 20 years working with discipline. I mean, 20 physical years. So when we are talking about 0 to 7, 7 to 14, etc., we, we are talking about esoteric years, not physical years. And in this first initiation, the Christ must destroy all of the remaining ego of the visible moon. And uh, he's going to be working with the sphere of the moon, which is also known as the limbo. And remember that in limbo is where we find our fake personality. And he must there completely destroy the false personality to begin to manifest the way of being of his inner being. And, well, in the second initiation, well, the Christ grows from 7 to 14 years, while he descends to, uh, he do the cleaning work of the sphere of Mercury, 
which is relating to the fornicating selves, uh, which is also part of the visible moon. And um, during the creation of that uh, gold vital body, the vital body of gold, <laughs> the second baptism is received, which is the baptism of fire. Remember that we talk about that in the lecture number nine. And um, in the third initiation of gold, during the creation of the astral body, he uh, begins to work with the invisible moon, which are in the infra dimensions of the planet Earth. He is going to clean there the circles of, uh, or the spheres of Venus, of Sun, and of Mars, where we find like those um, instinctive emotional defects that, like the lust, like the um, greed like um like anger you know that are that are related to the passion to the fire and he is there creating the fire body which is the astral body remember the fire is related to the astral to the emotion and well at that point he achieves like total control of his emotion and um all this work of the second mountain, if you can see here that guy like pushing that uh, stone, is Hercules. And that is because all the work of the second mountain is also symbolized with the uh, 12 labors of Hercules. Well, actually, nine of the 12, of the 12 labors, sorry, of Hercules are related to the work in the nine dental circles on the second mountain. And the last three labors of Hercules are the works of the third mountain. And well, in this second uh, initiation, I mean, this is the third initiation. In this third initiation, the Christ grows from 14 to 21 years old. Well, in the fourth initiation of gold, which, uh, the mental body of gold is created. And here the Christ uh, have to confront the selves of the spheres of Jupiter, Saturn, Saturn and Uranus, which are like the beasts of uh, an intellectual nature. Here we find the selves of tyranny, of violence against God and against art, against ourselves, and um, the defects of um, of lie, of lying. And with this work, he is achieving like the total purification of his mind and is achieving a Christic mind. And this achievement, achievement is symbolized on the Palm Sunday in which Christ entered, you remember the city, riding that donkey. And the donkey actually symbolizes our mind. And riding it represents the dominion over the mind. And in this process, the Christ grows from 21 to 28 years old. And, well, the fifth initiation of gold is given with the creation of the castle body or the body of the wheel, but of gold. And here begins the work of the study and elimination of the causal cells when the Christ gets to have, like, around 33 years, um, receive the Gnostic initiation. And, uh, well, the Christ at that point can fully incarnate in the person because at that point that person has like a Christic, like a, a golden wheel and uh, have like um, these five bodies pure enough so they can like resist the voltage of the of the Christ so he can get come and incarnate that is when the Christ says uh, how is it is I am uh, I am who I am I think that is the, that is the exact phrase in English I know it well in Spanish but I don't cannot translate it exactly. It's something like that. He, at some point, the Jesus Christ said, like, I am who I am. And that is the point where he already incarnates in the person's body. And now the, the Christic force is the one that is manifesting fully in the person's body. And when he, uh, do, mm, when he comes to do this, he starts immediately getting the merchants out of the temple. 
you know, that the temple is the body and those merchants are the causal selves. So uh, at this point is where the drama of Jesus Christ begins. You know, the cosmic drama that uh, Jesus came to represent the, um, the passion of Christ, you, you know, then needs to be lived internally, in our internal world, step by step, but very consciously. It is, it, this is not like a dream or something like that. Even though it is internally, the person is being conscious of every step that is taken. The masters that have, that have lived uh, this process say that this drama becomes so conscious that the person believes at, at times that he is uh, like raw like living that in his own flesh because there is no step that master jesus has taken that the initiate doesn't have to take pain and bitterness everything is feel as if it were you know like raw the same flesh and this is why master jesus said i am the way i am the truth because no one reaches the father except through the Christ, which is getting the total crucifixion. So when the causal body of gold, oh, sorry, is <clears throat> like created, it is, as I was saying, when the person received that monastic initiation, and that is where the person have to begin to completely disintegrate the causal cells so that not even a shadow of defects remains in the person in order to have access to the third mountain because you cannot go to the third mountain work with with even a shadow of a psychological defect but it is also in the work of the second mountain when the christ must pay for all the hard karma that are the crimes against the holy spirit which are those, um, you know, non-forgivable sins, which are uh, non-negotiable sins. And um, that those are all the, um, those are like the, the karma that we have to pay for the misuse that we have made of our creative sexual energy, which is like the Holy Spirit in us. And we are going to pay this with a very painful disease that will last approximately eight physical years. And that um, illness will allow us to settle all uh, the remaining karma, to left all that paid. And uh, furthermore, that intense pain will like bring out the heaviest intelligences of the ego that are the causal selves, so that the Christ can like observe them and eliminate them. And you can easily see that when you are in a terrible pain, actually the hardest beast of your, your psychology like comes. And if you are there in self-observation, you can actually get to eliminate those psychological defects. And well, in this work, he will eliminate all the selves of the infradimension of the sphere of Neptune which are all the like the selves of treason of our psychology you know the selves of desire of justification and of ill will there the Judas will betray the Christ with a kiss uh, Pilate will betray the Christ and will wash his hands and Caiaphas will lead him to crucifixion so internally the person is going to leave all that and those are the eyes of treason that he needs to be eliminating at that point and internally the process of crucifixion and death will be experienced and uh he is going to leave the um to, he will have to descend to hell those three days and these three days are related to three levels of consciousness corresponding to the culmination of the causal body of gold, of the buddhic body of gold, and of the atmic body of gold. There, in this process, he must confront and disintegrate all, sorry, all of the causal cells, which are the seven um, 
pets of legion, you know, uh, laziness, greed, loss, pride, uh, anger, gluttony, uh, and envy. And there he ends with all shadow of evil. And let's remember that death kills death for an eternity. So without ego, we become immortal beings. It is the ego that actually causes us to suffer from diseases, uh, that we get to uh, degenerate, to get old. Uh, it is the cause that we generate karma that you know, end up in um, illnesses or in having an accident or that someone kill us, and that is because we have that uh, killer self, and we have that karma, and it is the cause that our energy um, centers become all the time unbalanced, and with then, you know, the glands and the um, hormones and cells of our body degenerate. So the ego is the cause that we come to the crepitude and death. So already without an ego, we turn into immortal beings. And uh, already at that point, without a, without an ego, did Christ resurrect as an immortal being, and he do he do so he does so to start the work of the third mountain. He has to give himself all this process to achieve liberation, because without the disintegration of the causal selves, he would never. Um, he could never step on the doors of the Absolute because he may have incarnated the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit within himself, but the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are like mechanical because it is the law of three. And you cannot enter the ray of creation divided into three laws. You need to enter into the Absolute um only as one law so in the work of the third mountain he is going to break with all the that um mechan mechanicality let, let's call it like that and uh well we are going to be talking about that in the next lecture and well that is why it is said that god himself has to die because the initiate having already incarnated the three superior forces of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, he is actually a God at that point, capable of creating by means of the verb, whatever he wants, a planet, or depending on his hierarchy. And we are going to be talking about the hierarchies in, in later phase B lectures. But the thing is that uh, uh, at that point, it's still... For the absolute, he is mechanical. So he needs now to go through a great mystical death so that these three laws merge into a single law and that will be the work of the third mountain that we are going to be detailing in our next lecture. Uh, so finishing the second mountain to, to end this lecture, and he is going to end, or the person, he or she, <laughs> with 99% of consciousness. Um, it is actually in the third mountain when he is going to gain that remaining 1% of consciousness that is the cosmic consciousness. And in the second mountain, the death of the entire animal ego occurs, and therefore the end of suffering, the end of death, and the immortality is achieved. It is said that the Master Jesus still lives with the same physical body with which he did his work on the Holy Land. They also, uh, the Master Saint Germain, and for example, the Count Cagliostro, among others, preserve the same body with which they did his work yeah, because they are immortal beings. However, other masters who arrive with their body uh, at uh, an advanced age or that he, their body are very deteriorated by the process of, the, of paying the heart karma, they actually at that point tend to change their body, to reincarnate in another body as immortal beings 
and or they have the choice to transfer their gold atoms to another body to continue as immortal beings to the work in the third mountain. Actually, we are going to see that in detail also in the next lecture. I'm giving you like a lot of things of the next lecture. And well, to finish, like let us remember, sorry, this is in, in Spanish, I forgot to translate it. But actually in English, it's, it, it says that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Because no one comes to the Father if not uh, by means of the Christ. And the thing is that we, um, or truth, uh, through the Christ. And the thing is that we get to reflect on this phrase and understand the importance of incarnating our inner Christ. The importance of doing this work to awaken our consciousness and to revolutionize ourselves so we can get to direct path and complete this work which is the work that we came here to do. We came here as divine sparks to become gods. And uh, we need to awaken to this reality so we encourage ourselves to do this work. And, well, I will invite you to join us next week to study the work of the Third Mountain, which is a wonderful work of sacrifice for humanity, that will allow us to free ourselves completely, already converted into like children of light. And well, this has been today's lecture. And well, this is, let me check if there is any question. If not, we are going to finish this lecture. And if at any point you watch the video and have any question, remember that I am here available through the uh, messenger to help you with any question that you have. I am having certain issues now um, with the, by, to create a WhatsApp group. Some of you have asked me to create a WhatsApp, WhatsApp group for this page and I will do so. But at this point I am like working a lot with a lot of things. But soon, soon I'm going to make a WhatsApp group so we can get like in contact and we can like solve any question or talk about these topics like in a closer way. I am doing that in, yeah, soon, I hope. And well, thank you very much to all of you who watched the video. Uh, I want to say hi to VK Vera. And I don't know if that is well pronounced. Oh, well, thank you very much for being here. And well, see you guys the next time. Thank you very much and have a lot of uh, strength in your inner work. Ciao, ciao.